LinkedIn Sales Navigator is the most powerful prospecting tool on the market, yet most sales reps don't know how to use it to its full potential. In this course, I'm gonna teach you how. Hey, I'm Jed Marley, head of Op on Sales at Mailshake and creator of the Practical Prospecting Newsletter. I'm going to teach you eight of the exact strategies I've used over the last three years, plus three bonus strategies that have helped me do up to 200% plus of my quota. I'll give you a step-by-step -step guide of how to execute each one, as well as suggested messaging that you can use on your own. Now, quick background on me, my first six months as an SDR, I struggled to hit quota. I was calling dead cold leads and felt like I needed a better reason to reach out to them. That's when I started looking into Sales Navigator. It's a tool that most of us have access to, but don't really know how to get the most out of it. However, if you do master it, you'll have endless possibilities for finding warm leads. It wasn't until I learned some of these possibilities that I started doing 100% plus to quota, even 200% plus. And it was these strategies that helped me find consistency as an SDR, which accelerated my promotion to management, where I eventually built a team from three to 15 plus using the same strategies I'm teaching you today. I believe any sales rep who truly learns to master Sales Navigator will always have a leg up on the competition. Now let's jump in. Before we talk about any strategies, you'll wanna learn how to set up your personas. Your personas is a filter you create for your ideal customer profiles. For example, I sell to sales development leaders in the US, so by creating this persona, when I'm applying future filters, it will only show me my ideal prospects. So let me show you how to do it. First, you're gonna navigate up to the top right corner and click on personas. Now you're gonna hit create new persona here at the bottom. Name it whatever you want. For me, this is gonna be sales development leaders. Now you're gonna to navigate to function, insert the department you're selling to. In my case, it's sales. So we're gonna to navigate to sales and select that. Next, you're gonna to go to seniority level. I only wanna reach out to folks who are director and VP level. And lastly, we're gonna to go to geography. If you have a territory, this is important so you can make sure you're only prospecting in your territory. In my case, I'm just prospecting the United States and now you're gonna hit save. Simple as that. Now we're ready to dive into the first strategy, job changers. Decision makers who are new to a company or who recently got promoted are more likely to be in the market for new solutions. And it makes sense, right? They wanna have an immediate impact. Often that means by implementing new technologies or processes to make their teams run more efficient or maybe to save costs. After all, people are hired and promoted to solve new and bigger problems or repeat previous success. Our goal is to reach out and align our solution with those problems. For that reason, you should be prioritizing these prospects who are changing jobs or getting promoted over regular leads. So let's dive into how you can find them. First, you're gonna navigate over to persona and you're gonna select the persona we created earlier. In my case, that's SDR leaders. Now you're gonna go over to activities and shared experiences and you're going to select change jobs in the last 90 days. Now you have a list of people who recently got promoted or changed jobs and you can continue to narrow down this list using these filters while you've accomplished a goal. Now that you have your list, let's talk about how to reach out. So I'm a fan of reaching out as soon as their first month, and a lot of people might say that's too soon, but here's why I like to do it. When you're new to a company, you're in information gathering mode. You haven't yet established your primary goals and projects you wanna tackle. So you should frame your messaging around what other people in their position typically experience when they're new to that job. For example, at my company, Mailshake, we sell email deliverability and sales engagement software. Typically when new sales development leaders join a company, one of the first things they're doing is looking at their team's process for outbound sequences. So if we reach out and say, hey prospect, typically new SDR leaders are digging into their sequences in the first month to find areas for improvement. Would it be helpful if you could see which words and templates are likely triggering spam filters? What we're doing here is we're calling out a common problem that new leaders experience in their position. Now let's jump into the second strategy, targeting companies with headcount growth. In this strategy, we're going to talk about how to find companies that are growing and why that's important. When companies grow, they experience new problems and as a result are often in the market for new solutions to solve those problems. A classic example of this is a small sales team going from manually calculating commissions on a spreadsheet to needing to use a software to do it automatically as they scale or a team going from using Google Docs to manage their knowledge base to needing a learning management system or LMS as they get bigger. Whatever solution you sell, there's typically a tipping point or a specific stage in which companies start looking for that solution. 
That's why I love this sales navigator strategy. It lets you pinpoint those growing companies at their sweet spot so you can reach out and align to those growing pains. Here's how to find them. First, you're gonna to navigate to department headcount growth. You're gonna select the department you sell to. In my case, I sell to sales. And then you're gonna put in your minimum growth percentage. I like 33% because that shows that the team is growing by 33% in the last six months. And then you can add a maximum growth percentage, but I don't really like to add that because if the company is growing you know, by 100%, 200% plus, I still wanna reach out to them. So now you're gonna hit add. And at this point, you can use the rest of the filters to customize to the exact companies you wanna reach out to. For example, company headcount, the industry, where they're based. But that's really it. That's how you find these companies that are growing. Now that you have your list of companies that are growing in the department you sell to, here's how to reach out. This is the messaging I would use. Hey prospect, looks like you've added 10 reps in the last few months. Typically, this is when handling commissions manually can suck up a lot of time and lead to errors. Recently helped customers X and Y automate this. Would you be open to more info? Now let's jump into using the lead list feature. You can use the lead list feature to book some of the easiest meetings you'll ever get. Here's how to do it. Anytime you have a good conversation with a prospect, regardless of whether or not you book the meeting or close the deal, add them to a list called good conversations, or honestly, whatever's going to help you remember the list. For example, let's say you cold call a prospect and they were pleasant with you, but simply didn't have a problem. So there was no reason to book the meeting. Still add this person to your list and connect with them on LinkedIn. If you've already been at your company for a while, go through all the meetings you booked or deals you've closed and add those prospects to this list too. You can even go to your AE and ask them for their previous opportunities, or if somebody left your company, go find the meetings that they booked and add them to this list as well. Basically, what you want to do is get the biggest list of prospects who are familiar with you and your company in a good way, of course. Once you've created your list, go back to it every two weeks or so to see if anyone has changed jobs. If they did, you can reach out and in most cases, they're more likely to respond because they're familiar with you and they'll either take a meeting, give you a referral, or at the very least, give you an honest reason as to why your product isn't relevant at the moment. Similar to the job changer strategy, you'll want to align your messaging to the problems they're likely experiencing in a new role. But this time you can open with a bit more warmth because again, they're probably familiar with you. So what I like to do is say, hey prospect, we spoke when you were with old company, maybe they were a customer, maybe you just booked a meeting, looks like you're now with this company, and then continue on with your job changer messaging. Let me show you how to do this. Say I booked a meeting with John Barrows. I'm gonna hit save and add him to my good conversations list. And now you can navigate to leads, click on your list. And like I mentioned, every two weeks or so, maybe once a month, come in here and at the top, click on change jobs in the past 90 days. And now these are all prospects I can reach out to that I've spoken with before and have a warm intro. The subject line I like to use for these people is from previous company to current company. The open rates are super high. Now, side note, this is one of the underrated reasons why you should stay with an organization long-term because over time you'll have an abundance of leads like this and you're really just reaching out to warm leads at the end of the day. Now let's jump into one of my favorite filters, which is the previous work history filter. The previous work history filter is one of my favorites because you can get super creative with it. The filter lets you find prospects who used to work at specific companies. And my favorite way to use it is to find people who used to work for one of your customers because they may have used your product before or they're familiar with it. Or even at the very least, the fact that their previous company uses your product will catch their attention and be strong social proof. So let me show you how to do it. First, you're going to navigate to Persona and you're gonna select the persona filter we created earlier. So in my case, I'll select SDR leaders. Now we're gonna to go to past company. And what I recommend you do here is find roughly 10 of your top customers and put their names in this filter. And again, this will show you ideal prospects who used to work for one of your customers. So let's grab AT&T, let's say IBM, and let's put in Apple as well. So assuming AT&T, IBM, and Apple were all my customers, now I have a list of prospects who used to work for them and like I said earlier, they're likely familiar with us, or at least I have strong social proof for when I reach out. Here's the messaging I would recommend when you reach out to these prospects. Hey prospect, noticed your time at previous company. They use my company to achieve X, whatever problem you helped them solve. Sounds like you might handle that at current company. Would you be open to learning more? A few other ideas you can use this for is people who used to work at one of your competitors because they're actually likely to be familiar with the space. 
people who used to work for a company that you also worked at because you have an icebreaker there, or basically any other place that you can use as an icebreaker if you know people at that company. Now let's talk about the filter that lets you get even more creative, probably my favorite, honestly, connections of. We've now arrived in my favorite sales navigator feature, connections of, and I don't think most people even know it exists. So there's two ways I like to use this filter. First, I use it to find ideal prospects who are connected to specific people. For example, prospects who are connected with my executive team or someone at my company who has a lot of LinkedIn clout. And I do this because if the prospect is familiar with them, chances are they're familiar with our company and our product or services. Now, the goal here is to call out the fact that you notice they're connected with these people and use it as an icebreaker and a way to build trust and catch the attention of that prospect. The second method is to use this filter for referrals. So look at prospects you've previously closed or find the names of customers in your CRM and then plug them into this filter and it'll show you ideal prospects who are connected with them. For this method, your goal is to reach out to the customer and ask if it's okay for you to use their name when you reach out to these prospects, assuming they know them beyond just being connected. Here's how to do it. First, as usual, you're gonna navigate to Persona and you're gonna select your sales navigator persona. Next, you're gonna go up to connections of, and again, depending on your strategy, if you wanna use the connections of your executive team or the referral strategy, in this case, we're gonna assume John Barrows is my CEO. Now I have a list of prospects who are connected to John Barrows, so I can reach out and reference the fact that they're connected with him and use that as a warm intro. Or let's say John is one of my customers, I can now reach out to John and say, hey John, I noticed X, Y, and Z prospects are connected with you. Do you mind if I use your name when I reach out to them to let them know that you're also a customer? Now I'm going to show you how you can find prospects who are already talking about your product and the problems you solve on LinkedIn. Now we're on to strategy number six, using content keywords to find prospects who are already in the market. If your prospects are active on LinkedIn, they're likely already talking about the problems you solve there or even your product or your competitors. A common example is people who ask their network for opinions on which vendor to go with. So here's how you can find them in four steps. Step one, think of any keywords associated with your product or service and the problems you solve. For example, mine are cold email, deliverability, reply rates, and all of my competitors' names. Step two, create a Boolean search of all these keywords. If you don't know what a Boolean search is, it's basically a way you can search for multiple things at one time. Now let me show you how to do this on LinkedIn. So you're gonna take your Boolean search, you're gonna copy and paste it right into the search bar, hit search. Now you're gonna filter by posts to find posts talking about these keywords. And lastly, you're gonna filter by latest show results. And now you can see a list of prospects who are talking about your keywords. So what you're gonna to wanna to do at this point is scroll down until you find a relevant post talking about you know, keywords related to your product or service, and then reach out to the prospects who are engaging on that post. And that's it. Those are my top six strategies for using Sales Navigator to find warm leads. Now there's plenty more out there that I didn't cover and Sales Navigator is always updating their software. So I'm sure there will be plenty more to come, but here are three more bonus strategies that I also love to use. Here are three more bonus strategies for finding warm leads on Sales Navigator. First, company followers, which lets you find prospects who are following your company on LinkedIn. Of course, these people will be very warm, but there's not always gonna be a lot of them. Second is technologies used. Now, no technographic data is perfect, but if you work particularly well with prospects who use a specific tech stack, you can use this filter to narrow down your search to the best leads possible. And last but not least, intent. This is a new feature from Sales Navigator and so far, I use it as a way to narrow down my list. If let's say I've got a thousand leads, I'm not necessarily gonna reach out to all of them, but I can narrow it down to find, again, the warmest leads that have intent. There's so many more ways to leverage LinkedIn Sales Navigator, so get creative and use it to your advantage. Hope you all enjoyed. Like I mentioned, understanding Sales Navigator was one of the biggest reasons I was successful as an SDR and got promoted. And these are the exact strategies I've built my last two SDR teams on. And the best reps I've managed have always taken the initiative to understand the ins and outs of their tech stack. So I appreciate you taking the time with me to do just that. If you want more practical tips like this, check out the Practical Prospecting newsletter where I share practical prospecting tips to help you book more meetings every other Sunday.